Hello, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 556. Five, See that? 556. Five, Five five six of the Axios Zinger Show with I, your host Agostino Zinger. I hope this podcast is finding you well. I hope you're well wherever you may be. How am I? Thank you for asking. I'm doing pretty, pretty well. If you're watching this podcast via YouTube, you may have noticed a slight difference in my hairstyle. You may have noticed a little change in the way that I put my hair up at the top. You may have seen something a little bit different. You may have been exposed to some of my greys that I kind of hide behind this flipping mountain of hair usually when I've got my hair up. And if you can see it, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you can see it, what are your thoughts on my haircut? Leave your comments down below. Again, if they're harsh, if they're hatery comments, I'm not going to take them to heart. So be as ruthless and as brutal as you can. If my head looks like a peanut, say so. If I look like a creep, say so. If I look suave, say so. If I look cool, say so. If I look like a deadbeat dad that doesn't go visit their kids, say so. I want to hear your opinions on this. Um, I'm also thinking of maybe like trimming the beard because if I've got this head, this kind of like funk going on here, I kind of want to get rid of the beard and not have too much distractions going on on my face again if you listen to the podcast if you don't know i basically got two cornrows at the top of my head um so where my hair is i usually i split it in two well i got the the hairdresser to split it in two and she basically gave me some cornrows at the top but i'm thinking i should maybe lower um the length of my beard so that it's not as distracting it doesn't make me look too aggressive in that regard even though it's hard for me not to look aggressive in the face because you know this is my grill my grill already looks like you know it looks like one of those girls that pops around the corner of the alleyway. Do you know what I mean? Someone's going to get, ah! Someone's going to scream and whatnot. So I get it. But yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. I'll be eager to hear your impressions on that regard. Um, not much has been else has been going on in my life, to be honest. It's been pretty, pretty one note. Running, gym, running, gym, working out. Yeah, we're running gym, running gym, running gym, reading, watching some stuff online, writing here and there, getting my pictures developed. So hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be uploading those very, very soon on my social media platforms and my website. Um, check it out at www.agasinozdinger.com. You see my photography, I'll be uploading that and updating that very, very soon. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that's been about it, really. Oh, yeah, I went out to see God Janssen play in Fabric the other day. That was awesome. So I'll recap that later. But apart from that, it's been fairly fairly chill I'm not gonna lie it's been a really really chill one and i'm actually happy for it i'm actually happy that i'm having a bit of a chill one and i'm not going too crazy because i feel like the end of the year or the middle of the year is going to be a little bit more nutty 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 so that's definitely been a welcome change in that regard but anyway we're not gonna waste some more time we're not gonna dilly dally too much just jump right into it main topic to talk about so i don't want to waste too much of your time i've got myself a little mug of coffee here so whatever you're sipping on or drinking grab it and let's dive on deep so first things first get some sad news out of the way unfortunately a uh a dear friend of mine from the scene somebody who i kind of spent a lot of time around um for like a four-year period when i was you know i basically lived at the alibi um this guy called jimmy who unfortunately i don't know he's i don't even know his last name that's how transient these like hipster east london relationships were these people were like my everything. They were the center of my world. And then suddenly, in the blink of an eye, you don't see them ever again. Weird. Mostly it's, my, mostly it's on me because I don't necessarily, you know, hang around there anymore. And I don't keep up people. And I don't really keep in touch with people. And I kind of am a bit of a loner. I mentioned this previously on other pods already. So I'm boring you with this stuff. So I know that's, the, you know, whatever. Please forgive me for that regard. But at the time, when I did meet Jimmy, he always kind of lit up the room. He was the kind of guy that would always make you feel like you were the center of the room and you didn't meet him. He kind of made every interaction seem like the most meaningful interaction. Even if he was just, you know, doing lip service to be nice, he always came across like a genuine dude. So I don't even think he was, you know, he was doing it to be nice. I just generally think if he fucked with you, he would let you know. Um, many, many hugs were shared with him. Many shots, many drinks, many sing-alongs during karaoke at Yellowby. Um, I bumped into him a couple of times here and there at the Haggerston. I saw him a couple of times at Blondie's and just generally a really solid, cool guy. Somebody that you could immediately see or somebody you could immediately spot from like a mile away. He's gay, how he walked, you know, the little hunchback, his little bop, um, the jackets he used to wear, 
how high up his jeans were, tucking in his shirts, the crazy st- outfits he always have on, like always dressed immaculately, really, really, really well, underrated boot game. And just an all-around solid dude. Really, really solid dude. Um, so, yeah, it does really uh, pain me to see that he's passed. I don't really know the circumstances around it. Don't want to know either. None of my business. I think it's important just to kind of um, uh, recognise the impact that he had on me at that time and everyone else, that I think, in that scene as well that kind of knew him or even knew him outside the scene and kind of got a, a real personal relationship with him and kind of built that up over the years. Um and yeah, I haven't been using Instagram that much, but I jumped on Instagram the other day and as per usual, you know, either you get met with nonsense or you get met with really troubling news. And this is the first thing I saw when I opened my feed, uh, courtesy of my friend Lou Jenkins, who said the following, uh, this life is hard and relationships are harder. I shared some of the funniest moments ever with Jimmy and every time we spent together was a real memory. I wish I'd been a better with you in the previous years, but I'm not here to share my regret. More, sh- more share light on the years that we have spent. Um, uh, no, uh, more share light on years we spent having a fucking good time. Love to all that are feeling this one. It's heavy hitting and I'm truly gutted. Everyone's rock and roll little brother forever and a couple more. Definitely 100% agree with that one. So let's play uh, the clip that um, Louis uploaded of um, of Jimmy from back in the day or from a few years ago maybe. A couple of years. Two for me, two for you. Feed them bitches carrots. Huh? Fuck them like a rabbit. Sorry that- oh yeah, that's him. So yeah, RIP Jimmy, man. Absolute legend of East London. Um, somebody that I'm sure a lot of people would know. And um, yeah, man, thoughts and feelings go out to his family and friends. Um, it really does suck when this stuff happens. It's always a kind of sober reminder of how old we're all getting. Unfortunately, this is kind of one of those past, you know, parts of life that we kind of all don't really want to reckon with. The fact that we're going to lose people um, along the way. Um, is always really troubling especially people that kind of played a really instrumental part in our sort of growing up and maturing and whatever it may be yeah it just sucks man it really does suck so r.i.p jimmy man gone but not forgotten absolute legend absolute legend um yeah man it sucks it really does suck because a part of me thinks hey this is partly your fault because you never keep in touch with people so these things hurt more because you start to regret that you never kept in touch with people. But then I know me and I know I'm not going to do it anyway. I know I'm like, I, I kind of made this promise to myself at the beginning of the year because um I want to fix my old MacBook. I think I mentioned before the podcast, I had all these um, birthdays saved on my calendar for my old Facebook account. the My original Facebook account, the one I signed up for, uh, I signed up with when I went to university, when I went to Central St. Martins. Um, you could only access Facebook with a university or college sort of account or email address. And I had to open it up, obviously, with that email just I had from, C- from CSM. And it was my first legit Facebook. So it had legitimately everyone I've ever bumped into in life was on that Facebook. For the moment, I was like 18 all the way up until I was like 24, 25. Crazy, right? And after that, it just turned into just, you know, whatever, a spam thing. But it was a really big part of my kind of life and documenting my social life and um, for whatever reason I guess at the time too Facebook had has that birthday thing where you can give people birthday shout outs and I think I don't know what I did back in the day but I think I must have synced it somehow with my computer my MacBook that I've got here and it's just saved it forever so I've got everyone's birthdays from that period and I told myself I was going to find these people on Instagram whatever if I got them on my phone book and text them when it's their birthday and say happy birthday long time to see hope you're well just as a kind of you know just to kind of reach out um to the other side and sort of just keep in contact with people and I haven't done it I know I, I lied I did it twice in since the start of the year and there's been many birthdays since then and I just haven't kept up with it because I just can't be bothered um I guess intrinsically it's just not part of my personality to be that guy I just like I guess I'm always kind of a uh a kind of um temporary good time dude enjoy me for the moment but then you never know if I'm gonna be around forever which I which I don't like because I generally would like to have a bigger social group but I don't go out my way to try to cultivate it even though I know people would like me to be that person or even I'd like myself to be that person so I don't know man I don't know I don't know Let's move on to the next topic I need to speak about, which is concerning my old workplace and my former boss, Simon Beckerman, has launched a new startup called Delhi, which he aims 
to kind of it seems like the same sort of kind of mold as depop but essentially it's going to mostly gear towards the food market or the food space um from what i've read online it seems like um during the pandemic he was kind of inspired by all these food entrepreneurs out there people who are basically starting small businesses at home you know making sourdough bread um you know different pastries foods and stuff and delivering them um to their local area and these things have kind of grown and grown over the years especially with the advent of kind of ghost kitchens maybe leading the way and then people kind of scaling them back and kind of making them a bit more sort of like hand to table or was it hand to table or table to hand whatever that term is and it kind of became a big thing during the pandemic because people were basically being furloughed they had a bit of money to basically you know try out some things to be a bit more creative maybe tap into stuff they were actually passionate about and that launched a whole new field of people making their own things at home or at least maybe packaging them or whatever it may be and it looks like this new app delhi will be acting as the main place to go to if you wanted to connect to local people in your area making cool and interesting things within the food space whether it was plates i'm assuming foods whatever it may be you'd be able to find it on delhi and the only reason why i had to mention it was mostly number one because when i used to work at depop Oh no! Deep, when I when I was at Deepop, I think I've mentioned this a couple of times, but I think it's always important in life to have at least one workplace that you've worked at where the boss was really nice and the employees, for the most part, were really cool. Because it's always a really good barometer to kind of judge your kind of next jobs that you'll get, or it's a good barometer or a good kind of example for you to base how you would like your own company to function. I think it's really important to have that because I think sometimes if you will keep working for shitty people, it can kind of embitter you and make you feel as if everyone out there is a flipping snake when that's not the truth. When that's not the truth. And if you're for people that are complete compulsive liars or who kind of show one face and do the other thing, it can also make me believe that the whole startup industry is full of charlatans, which isn't the case. There are some charlatans in the space, but for the most part, there are some people that have some really good ideas who are trying to do some really cool, interesting things and they build great teams who can, can just continue running with that ball down the field because from what i know simon isn't really involved in depop at all anymore at the time that i was there he kind of took a bit of a back seat uh, i think that was the time when um what's her name uh i forgot her name something riga she took over as ceo and i remember simon taking a bit of a back seat and just coming in from time to time here and there and you know so the the fact that the company is still going from strength to strength and uh, they've got a new office here in london they're opening up different places all around the world they've got pop-ups they're doing markets they're doing they're really really crushing it so it goes to show that that kind of culture and that kind of example that was kind of laid down in the foundations of the company when it first began is kind of bearing fruit now that they're becoming a bigger company because usually once you scale things turn to shit i'm sure stuff in internally there's so many there's many things people can complain about but overall as a terms of a company chugging along it's definitely chugging along very very nicely and i think most of it has been because of the early work that was done right at the beginning anyway moving on so this delhi thing looks really cool and really interesting um so far this article courtesy of tech funding news it says delhi depot food and brainchild so depot food depot for food and brainchild simon beckerman grabs 2.5 million dollar funding simon beckerman 47 british italian entrepreneur who was born in milan and lives in london found depop in 2011 the founder of the online second-hand marketplace depop scored a multi-pan white windfall after he was snapped up by u.s rival etsy for 1.2 billion billion and i left that company i left that company before that happened uh way way before i think maybe two three years or two years i think or maybe two years or maybe a year and a half before it happened um maybe I wouldn't say it was a regret that I left because I did I did leave because I wasn't really I didn't feel like there was an opportunity for me to grow into the other areas of the company, especially the where I wanted to go to, which was marketing and community. It felt like to me at that company you had to kind of pally pally and get friendly with people that I didn't necessarily like as people. And I've never really been that kind of subservient, lick your ass type of dude. And I just didn't like to do that. And I'm pretty sure they probably didn't want, want me to be part of the team either. Do you know what I mean? So it's probably, the feeling was mutual. I didn't want to be friendly with them. They probably didn't want to be friendly with me because of whatever reason, who knows. And then I had to kind of decide like to either stay and be miserable in the work I was doing, customer service rep, or to move. And during the end of my time, I started to become a little bit of a negative influence or negative 
vibe guy around the space and i'm never that person i'm always a person that brings the vibes i'm always a good time in the office so the fact that i was turning into a bit of a dour monkey um made me feel as if i had to kind of step out and go elsewhere unfortunately for me <laughs> my timing was absolutely diabolical the moment i stepped away and moved to another company to try and get more responsibility and bump in salary all that good stuff um the company went under in two months and the next company i went to same thing happened to them form up so i had back-to-back -back elves in that regard but you know you live and learn you live and learn we continue here so uh they got 2.5 million dollar seed investment so let's go here this is the most important thing delhi uh, Depot for food? Question mark. It says as follows. While the founder agrees that Depot was inspired some of the thinking behind Delhi, he highlights that Delhi is a different product. Depop came at a time when Instagram had just started and our behavior to social media was on the brink of massive change, says Simon. It revealed an entire counterculture within the fashion industry that was ready to be nurtured. The community was there, but it hadn't been placed it hadn't had a place to be put together. Likewise, Delhi has been created after a pandemic, which has altered the way that we interact with food and the community. It has revealed a buzzing world of food lovers and makers. So in that vein, Delhi, like Depop, can become a source of inspiration, connection, and support network for all of those obsessed with food. And I like how you said that, like in context, because so, everyone always say, you know, marketplaces are the things that everyone wants to tap into, but Depop kind of worked because of timing. It kind of launched at the right time. It spoke to a particular niche, and it kind of just lasered in. Do you know what I mean? It didn't kind of alter or falter or kind of skew its kind of focus. It lasered in on the young kids who are buying flipping flannels from, you know, vintage shops and reselling them for crazy money on Depop or whatever it may be. And that's how it worked for them. It continues here. So how does it work? It says for community members, one can launch the app and jump straight into a world of food and drink and explore unique cuisines from small batch makers. As a buyer within the community, if you see something you fancy, a few shoot clicks later and it's on your way to your home. The quote says as follows. For the creators of the community, we can help onboard them to, to a maker's account so they can sell their products for their followers through Delhi. Part of the process is making sure we get to know each one of the makers personally and help create a beautiful page that really shows the best of what they do and who they are. From there, we are um, from here, we have helped uh, create a new revenue stream for many small businesses as well as promoting them as part of our community and what we producing through our own channels on instagram and the newsletter highlighting the latest drops adds beckerman brain child of simon beckerman my neighbor um the dumplings four foot gallery da, 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 um, all these places are in delhi talking about the brand mission beckerman notes our mission is to unite interesting food people from the incentive of cook um drop or cook dropping a food a fresh batch of bagels to that surprising bottle of pret nut or pet nuts. I don't know what pet nut is. As a buyer, you can discover exciting drops and support passionate independent producers. As a maker, you can share your food and your drink with a new community. You got to try new things. As far as creating a difference from the competitors, you said we are building a food market in your pocket. Yes, but more than that, we are here to emphasize and promote the people behind the products. And that's what I think was really cool. The imagery around it, the branding around it is really well done. They have this sort of like... um. It's, this is an article courtesy of Courier, that another interview that did with Simon, which is really good. I recommend you check it out. Um, it says that uh, Simon Beckerman founded his fashion resale app in 2011, helped to sell Etsy last time 1.6 billion. Now he's turning his attention to the food and drink world with a new brand, Delhi. So definitely check it out. I'll link it in the show notes. But I like this almost like 35 millimeter kind of aesthetic in terms of the pictures. It's really raw, really hands on um it kind of gives a real diy feeling all the pictures are taken in situ of the person's house home kitchen office studio wherever they're making their wares and it kind of gives it a real organic authentic sort of feeling and i like it i'm a big fan of it and i think that's definitely going to go a long way in terms of sort of um selling it to people in general especially to the makers who are going to be on it because i'd imagine the big part of a platform like delhi is getting the correct people on board first or the people that you kind of want to kind of give the best first impression when you kind of launch these sort of apps you kind of want to have the right sort of brands the right sort of produce makers or whatnot out there representing it so yeah so big up simon for doing great things and like i mentioned man i think it's really 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 important in life to try and work for at least one decent company so you get an idea of um what decent companies look like so you're not um so you don't have i don't say a form of bitterness so do you, 
just so you're not jilted. So if it goes wrong, you don't feel as if like every place is like that. There are some good companies out there. There are some people actually leading their companies in great ways and doing some great things. And maybe we'll sure see those new things happening with Delhi going forward. Next on the list, I want to move on and talk about Mr. Kanye West. Obviously, Kanye's been going through some madness over the last couple of weeks, it feels like. Um, it feels like weeks, feels like years. Who knows how much time has actually elapsed. But whatever the case may be, he has had some very interesting things to say on social media. Um, from the, you know, uh, breakup with Junior Fox to the simping over... Could you call it simping that's your wife? You can't call it simping. No, that's a bit rude. For whatever. To the constant pursuit of Kim online, even though they're in the process of getting divorced, allegedly. It's all been a bit of a mare, isn't it? Um, for me personally i'm just here for the shoes i'm here for the clothes i'm here for the stage shows i'm here for the motivational design kind of speeches that he gives um i'm here for the music of course all this other play play stuff i'm not really interested in but it does really make you think in general when it comes to kanye whether you should care about those things if you do care about the clothes, the fashion, the shoes, the blah, 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 blah. Should you care about somebody in their entirety? Should you? Especially someone that you don't know, right? Because I know he gives a lot of himself out there and he puts a lot of stuff in public that he probably shouldn't have or he, that he probably shouldn't do. I know that's what the recent sort of screenshot we saw from Kim, where she was basically asking, why do you keep screenshotting our images and sharing our private messages with people? He said, because I'm your number one fan, you know, and people are saying that's bipolar. We don't know what's going on there. I'm not going to psychoanalyze the guy. Not my business. But it's very interesting that it kind of made me think about that, like whether or not you should be caring about him as a person if you're going to enjoy the other things that he produces because part of the, because the only way you're going to enjoy those things is if he's in a good sound mind. And at the moment, is he in a good sound mind? I don't know. But the number part is really interesting to me was this latest post that he uploaded on his Instagram profile where he kind of finally decided to take off the all caps because I think people were basically, you know, getting him in the comments for basically screaming because, you know, in internet or social media talk, when you write in all caps, it basically comes across to you're screaming. Whereas if you write all caps um, using a pen, it doesn't look like you're screaming. It just looks like all caps. But for whatever reason, when you write it on the keyboard, it does. So... He posted an image of himself at the free Larry Hoover concert, which again, impeccable stage design. No one can fuck with Kanye when it comes to production of music shows. Like that experience is just, you know, it's other level. I can only imagine what it's like actually being in the stadiums or these arenas when these things are happening. It looks incredible on TV. It looks incredible on your laptop, on your phone. So what, just imagine what it's like to actually be there in those spaces. But anyway, he uploaded a picture of himself um, looking amazing, great picture. And he says the following, the caption, I've learned that using all caps makes people feel like I'm screaming at them. I'm working on my communication. I can benefit from a team of creative or professionals, organizers, and mobilizers and community leaders. Thank everybody for supporting me. I know sharing screenshots was jarring and it came off as harassing Kim. It didn't come off. It probably was, mate. Um, I take accountability. I'm still learning in real time. I don't have the answers. To be a good leader is to be a good listener. This I'm still learning in real time is something that I have kind of really grown to respect over time and i've really kind of understood especially in the wake of virgil's passing r.i.p to the goat i think one of the special powers or one of the special ingredients that made both of those guys great in terms of Kanye and virgil was their ability and their willingness to fail and learn in public so I think too many of us, especially when it comes to creatives, we want to kind of perfect and really fine tune what we're doing before we present it to the world. If it's not fine tuned, if it's not correct, no one gets to see it. And more likely than not, if no one gets to see it, if, if more likely than not, if you don't put it out like, like, like that, it's never going to come out. So you kind of always have this stacked, like I have, I have a hard drive full of flipping PSD files and line sheets of brands I never launched, posters I never put out, zines I never released, like crazy shit, right? And all of it is kind of just there, collecting dust, doing absolutely nothing. But if you put stuff out and you allow yourself to be ridiculed, you allow yourself to look, in, you know, to look less than or to kind of not meet the mark, it kind of gives you time to grow. And usually it's like learning a language. You only learn a language when you start speaking to native speakers. But speaking to native speakers, you have to go and actually speak to them in public, which can be really embarrassing, right? Because you can fumble over the words, get your grammar all mixed up. But actually, you learn far quicker that way than just sitting at home doing Duolingo on your app. 
on your phone, sorry. Sorry, I, I'm clogged up, hay fever. Um, or doing any sort of like remote learning. You actually learn better by being in front of people and kind of, you know, uh, taking off their social cues, seeing how they wink at certain words, move at this sort of word. Do you have any annotation, uh, annotation uh, accent, pronunciation, whatever? All those things are important when you're learning a language. So I think it's the same thing goes when it comes to uh, being somewhat creative. You kind of have to learn in public. But we don't do it. I learned that. But the one thing that's really concerning was this sort of like, I'm still learning idea or I think accountability, I'm still learning. I don't know. The other side of me thinks you're 44 years old, bro. You've got four kids. You've lived a full and somewhat rich life. You've packed a lot into your 44 years or whatever old years, right? Like, are you like, are you learning or are you just a douche? And if you are a douche, is that okay to be a douche? Like, is it okay? Because I think like, for whatever reason, for me anyway, for me, I always felt like I could be a pretty decent PR person for a celebrity because I feel like I have, if there's a, I have a lot of flaws. But one of my best traits I feel like is I have a lot of, Self awareness, like I can, I can, I can call myself out in a way no one else can call my call me out in, right? I'm very aware of how I am, how I come across, how people view me. I don't need people to tell me; I can just see it. I got that kind of observation skills in that regard, and I'm also aware of how other people view other people. But I think some people don't see how people view them; they're just assuming their head that they're a good guy. So maybe in Kanye's head, he keeps thinking he's a good guy. He keeps thinking he's a kind of hero when in fact, a lot of people are looking at him as the villain. And I always thought the best way to kind of having a great strategy for how you approach social, how you approach your brand online is to understand how you're perceived and to either lead into it or to do everything you can to change the narrative. But trying to pretend like that narrative doesn't exist never works so this whole like i'm learning sort of thing is a bit weird because it kind of makes me feel like i don't know like he's like observing absorbing himself of responsibility but it gives the impression like he doesn't get it and it's not a problem if he does get it Do you know I mean that's that's a weird thing he's allowed not to get it but at some point we have to accept that this is just his personality this is Kanye west and maybe, like I said before, I don't care about all this other stuff, I don't care about this, I don't care about that, I just care about the fashion and the clothes. No, if you care about the fashion and the clothes, you have to care about all of this. This is what comes with it. You're going to get him spazzing out online. Because imagine how he is now. It's only going to get worse in the future. When his kids get older and they start doing their own things, he's only going to be the, the more amplified version of what he is now because he hasn't, his vote, he, the way he kind of expressed himself hasn't dimmed over the years. It's only got especially with the success he has, newly minted billionaire, his access, his ability to like speak and be heard is bigger or it's on a higher platform than it's ever been ever in his entire life. So if you don't like him now, you're probably not going to like him ever. It's a weird place to be in it. Really weird place to be in it. I think the person that put it the best, ironically enough, was Kevin Hart. Curse of the news. Kevin Hart set rushes to Kanye's um, aid and mid feud with Kid Kanye and Billie Eilish. Again, another part of the drama I haven't even mentioned. Uh, entertainer Kevin Hart expressed his personal thoughts about the ongoing feuds of Kanye West and has ignited against stars Pete Davidson, Kid Kanye, and Billie Eilish. What a list of people to beef with publicly. Um, Hart hopes Kid. No, yeah. Um, the star lo um, started off by issuing a disclaimer over Kanye's behavior and warned Kid Kanye as well as Billie Eilish that West was quote-unquote, just being himself. Hart hopes Kid Cudi and Billie Eilish realise that West's comments and actions are just him being himself. He later went on to detail to tell The Sun he was quoted as saying as follows, Look, Kanye is Kanye, so it's drama to some, but it's not drama to him. At the end of the day, in West's eyes, he says he's being himself and people need to either accept it or move on. And legitimately, I think that's been the most eye-opening and on-the-point observations of what it's like to be a Kanye West fan in 2020 that I've ever seen. 
me personally, I don't have an issue with it because I think I've said before, I've come from a very eclectic sort of musical background and interest, especially being a DJ. And I follow a lot of very, or I'm a fan of a lot of artists who have very questionable past or questionable personal lives. And I've always been able to separate the art from the artist. But it feels like in hip hop, this is the first sort of figure that we've had as a culture where people have had to kind of wrestle with everything inside of them as to whether they should be supporting a guy that can clearly make God level music, but in his personal life comes across like a bit of a douche. You know what I mean? We still haven't got an explanation about the whole Big Sean thing. We don't know what happened with Big Sean. Does he still owe him those millions? Did he get sold out behind the scenes? We have no idea. Um, he basically antagonized his fan base with that red Donald Trump hat. He told everybody that Trump was his fucking stepdad. Like, many things that people didn't really like him doing, he did purposely to kind of push people's buttons, it felt like, which is, again, you know, you wouldn't think that would be a thing that Cardi would do, but he did. And, you know, just one good album, and everyone comes rushing back to him again. So, you know, the feedback loop and the kind of lessons learned aren't going to be there in that case. But I think in general, if you're going to be a Kanye West fan, this is just part of the process. It just is what it is. Um, the, the, it continues here. During the course of his interview with the outlet, Hart also was quizzed over his thoughts regarding the feud of Billie Eilish. And he started to chuckle before admitting that his age prevents him from caring about such things. He said, I don't know. I'm 42. That's what doesn't concern me. True. But Kanye is 44. Why is he arguing with Billie Eilish? <laughs> I don't know. Um, either way, interesting stuff to see. Kanye is doing Kanye things. Hopefully he figures it out. And, you know, hopefully he figures it out. What else can I say, man? What else can I say? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think he even threw a little dart at flipping Machine Gun Kelly. No one's heard any Machine Gun Kelly songs. <laughs> oh, shit. That's a psycho, man. Absolute psycho. Um, what else? Bear me one moment. Bear me one moment. I've got to blow my nose. Oh, God. Let me pause this one sec. Yeah, yeah. Back again. Oh, hopefully the, my nose doesn't sound as flipping mad as it did earlier. God damn it, I hate hay fever so much. Allergies are the bane of my life, the bane of my life. Anyway, let's move on. Next on the list here, we have cut C of the Los Angeles Times. Julia Fox and Kanye West are no more. Boo hoo. Are we surprised? No. Do we care? No. Why do I care? I don't know. I don't actually care. I don't. Legitimately, one of the saddest consequences, no, one of the one of the negative consequences to come off the back of the pandemic has been my kind of attachment to my smartphone, my attachment to gossip, and my attachment to nonsense news. We've had nothing to do at home. We were reading books, or some of us are, watching movies, reading, watching TV shows reality TV, dramas, whatever, and just on social media 24-7. So I'm seeing way more stuff than I would usually see in any given day when it comes to these celebrities' lives. If this was pre-pandemic, I'd have no idea who Julia Fox was. Really, no idea apart from, oh, that's that girl from Uncut Gems. But as soon as the pandemic hits and we're all locked indoors and we're all on our phones for a prolonged period of time, nowhere to go, nothing to do, suddenly I've now care about these things or I'm now involved in these things. Don't get me wrong. I do think they're a welcome distraction, similar to the whole, you know, comedy store, LA comedy scene, stuff that I cover on my podcast sometimes. It's a welcome distraction when all the news is toxic and nonsense and you know, uh, negative and dreary and just do doom laden. It's nice to just look at these other people who are meant to be rich and famous and see what kind of mess they're getting up to on a daily basis because usually it's far more entertaining than these scripted shows that you watch. But at the heart of it, really, the sad thing about it is that these are people going through real situations, but it's turned into some sort of entertainment spectacle for us because our objective reality is so bleak that we are actually getting some weird macabre joy out of seeing others fall flat on their face and i feel like a lot of this is what's happening with julia fox now i feel a lot of people on the timeline 
reveling in the fact that she's broken up with Kanye, reveling in the fact that she was supposed to be pictured going to the airport crying, reveling in her looking a bit mad in that shoot she did with the cut. I might have it here, actually. Yeah, look, she's, she did a, a little kind of, you know, op-ed interview thing with the cut. Pictures taken by the great Jürgen Teller, who always seems to flip it, upset people on social media. And people are kind of having, you know, spasms online about her looking very uh, interesting and avant-garde and whatnot. And just having very mean things to say about her. Ironically enough, the people saying the meanest things about her are women. As I've always said in this podcast, the enemy of the enemy of all women isn't men, it's other women. And they are absolutely destroying her online because she looks a bit, you know, a little bit nuts in these pictures and whatnot. They're saying her bones are protruding too much in her chest. Like crazy that I would have never noticed. Women women picking at other women. But I feel like the lack of humanity that's happening nowadays is mostly due to the fact that everyday people are going through such tough times. They're having to face up with such dark realities that they get a little bit of joy out of seeing celebrities who are people who have been put on a pedestal having their life also somewhat uh put into some level of turmoil because there's no denying julia fox went from being a flipping princess to suddenly being on the lowest of the lows it feels like online i don't know what's happened to her personally but then on the back of this then she's got a beef not happy with azalea banks i just on non-stop drama like non-stop drama but you would hope there'd be some level of kind of um, some level of kind of maturity, grown upness. Like, hey, this is an obviously interesting time. I'm moving on my life. Da da da. But instead, it's competty. She's talking about writing a book. She's talking about she's come up. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. I have nothing interesting to say in the situation. I have nothing really interesting to add to it. I just wanted to comment on it because I commented it before on my channel. Um, I think it's nonsense leave them alone let her grieve or not grieve or get over it or not get over it however well she wants to get over it and just let people get on with their lives isn't it i don't know what else to say really really don't know what to say i just feel like it's a bit mad when i see people online legitimately excited and happy that she's not going out with Kanye West anymore it's like what do you want him to go out with you or are you just jealous that it wasn't you like i don't know like or are you just jealous of her in general or you don't rate her, or you think because she's white. I don't know what's honestly the meanest online has been so weird because I never really knew of Julia Fox's social media presence presence before she hooked up with Kanye anyway. Then suddenly people have a, an opinion about her and they wanna basically write her off or put in a certain category. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. It's just nonsense, really. So yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on because I don't have anything interesting to add to that one. Okay, yeah, interesting news. Next news to two. Next news here. Okay, next bit of news to talk about here. Interesting developments courtesy of Hypebeast concerning the great and the powerful Supreme. It looks like Tremaine Emeroy has been named as a new creative director of Supreme. That came out of absolute nowhere. I had no idea they were even hiring oh my god um oh come on where's it loading yeah there you go yeah interesting news right interesting news regarding this because um i don't think anyone had any idea that this position was even open that they were looking for somebody um it came out of left field especially considering the person they picked i don't think anyone would have kind of chosen to remain um ahead of his appointment so maybe that's the whole point of it it's actually an interesting choice maybe it's going to refresh the brand somewhat inject some new life into it who knows who knows so it continues the article says as follows according to reports tremaine emeroy has now been appointed the new creative director of supreme confirmed by the new york imprint 
the streetwear figure that also works under his artistic moniker Denim Tears has already started his position and will be working closely with the label's design team and founder James Jebbia, the legend. Jebbia will continue to oversee Supreme in all aspects of the business, including creative. It's also been noted that Tremaine will continue to design for Denim Tears while serving as creative director for Supreme. So he's got two gigs at the same damn time time the major development comes after vf court purchased supreme for 2.1 billion usd back in 2020 the sale of the brand saw many fans question if supreme could maintain this pinnacle in streetwear with the appointment of tremaine the multidisciplinary creative will be tasked with bolstering supreme's roots while progressing the imprint so a very big job very big boots to fill um what are my thoughts my thoughts are as follows i would have never guessed somebody with Tremaine's sort of um what would you say aesthetic and the kind of given the kind of closey designs for denim tears would be a really good fit for supreme but given his kind of roots in new york given his roots in the streetwear community um given his roots to that whole kind of um what they called retail mafia crew from back in the day it does make a lot of sense because if there's one thing about supreme they always tend to hire within they always tend to hire. Sorry, I didn't put thing up. They always tend to hire within the kind of supreme ecosystem, right? So if you're somebody that's a friend of a friend, somebody that's worked in a store from back then, who did this, who did that, they always tend to kind of look out for you in that regard. So that's a really good thing in that in that in that interest. Sometimes they can be a bit limited. I feel like in terms of the in terms of what they're able to put out, because if you're only limiting the field of people who work for you to friends of friends, that could negatively. I feel like. Uh, reflecting the products and what you're putting out because there's no real fresh ideas from the outside coming in but so far it's worked for them 20 plus years in the game smashing it they don't need me to give them advice on how they could have progressed their brand cool all right safe the interesting thing about it i think is that it feels like there have been a few creative directors so far at supreme or people that have worked under that kind of molecule as a kind of a because it feels like every couple of decades or every couple of five years there's always one person who kind of acts as the kind of I won't say the face. Yeah, maybe let's say the face of the, of the design team of Supreme because already James Jebbia is a face. So my nose is... Ah, the allergies! So you got James Jebbia as the face, but he doesn't really pop, pop out anywhere. And he's very private in that regard as a founder. And apart from that, all you got are the models and the people who kind of are around that kind of store or that brand, right? The kind of people that do the collaborations, the people that have been featured in the lookbooks, the catalogs works at the store back in the day those are the who you kind of deem as a face but usually the design faces i felt like have changed quite frequently maybe a little bit too much if you're being overly critical because i remember who was it the angelo guy from awake was what was kind of the face at one point then he obviously moved on to do awake full time before that i think it was brendan babsian at noah he moved on to do that full time before that, there was another guy too, uh, like Walter, or Max, Wolf. I don't know, some of those kind of names. Um, he was before that as well. Yeah, I remember there was another guy, like some some other white dude. He was also kind of the the kind of the face of the design team. Not sure if he's still there. So I don't know if this is a a position they're struggling to fill, or if the boots are too big to fill. Or maybe it's a role that you could only do for a short period of time. I don't know. Demand to be. I don't know. But it seems that people are kind of cycling in quite quickly through that kind of in that role as a kind of face to, as a face of it. But given how he kind of works, given how he carries himself with Tremaine, maybe he might be the long term sort of person to kind of guide him forward. And maybe the fact that they've kind of given him the creative director role, because I don't think if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I don't think those other guys were creative directors. They might have been like fashion design leads or whatever. I don't think they had the creative director role. So the fact that he's a creative director role, kind of overseeing the overall communication and sort of brand, whatever, of what they're trying to put out, that gives it a little bit more scope to be a little bit more long-term. Because if you don't, there's no point in getting a creative director to do a job for five years. You need to think five, ten years forward. You know what I mean? So that makes complete sense. And also, for people like myself... Long term, long long time Supreme fans, you know, first bit of Supreme I purchased was like when, twenty two thousand seven or some shit, right? For someone like myself who's kind of been a bit concerned about the direction of the brand and felt like they were going a bit too logo heavy, they were kind of trying to market too much to the kids, 
you know, really forgetting about people like myself who basically have kind of grown up with the brand over the years and don't really see themselves reflected in the brand too much anymore. It's great to have somebody like him in place because I feel like he might be able to address the balance a little bit and kind of hopefully bring it back to what it was in the past, maybe like five, ten years ago, where they were consistently, every collection had like at least 10 plus things that you would want to wear immediately. Whereas nowadays, I feel like there's some stuff in there, don't get me wrong, but it's not as like instant cop sort of stuff. Sort of instant running to go and get this or get that. You can get it on resale. You can maybe find it in a store. The impetus, the kind of desire to kind of go for those kind of things has kind of waned over the years. Now, it might be because of me as well. My buying decisions have kind of changed. But I think overall, the allure of the brand has somewhat waned over the years. Now, it could be because of the you know the buyout it could be because of the fact that it's been hyped now and all the kids are jumping onto it and i'm and i'm a and i'm deep down i'm a flipping hipster and i don't want all the kids to get on it because i wanted to keep it as my own little private thing who knows but in general i do feel like there has been a little bit too much attention being paid to the kind of gen z sort of type customer and not enough being paid to the quote-unquote millennials or the kids like myself who kind of came up with supreme at a particular age let's say 18 19 and kind of grew up with the brand you know like i got my first t-shirt my first hoodie box logo camp cat backpack waist bag collaboration sneakers north face and then slowly but surely i've kind of progressed to getting like you know m m m65 jackets from supreme denim pants like like my kind of my wardrobe has matured as the brand's matured but nowadays i feel like with the exception of some suits and some you know overcoats most of the stuff that's in the collection is mostly geared around people who are like 25 years old and under which might be their target demographic but i always felt like the power of supreme for me was the fact that but yeah, the power the, the, the most powerful era for me supreme was when aaron bondaroff used to model for them because at the time aaron bondaroff if i'm not mistaken was in his mid-30s or something right but he didn't look like an adult hype beast when he wore supreme he didn't look like that he just looked like a cool older dude wearing some cool older some cool wearing some cool clothes whereas i feel like nowadays if you have to put Aaron Bondaroff in the stuff that they make now, he would look a little bit like a cartoon. You look a little bit, not, you look a little bit like crazy, right? Um, so maybe that appointment can address some of those balances coming up. It can address some of that imbalance coming up in the future. But um, yeah, man, happy for the guy. Well done. Congratulations. Um, I've kind of known him sparingly from afar for a very long time. Um, I actually got my first sort of like major important CD job working at 1948 through his friend A side, who unfortunately I had a falling out with because, you know, if you know that guy personally outside of if you or if, if, for those of you who know that guy personally, you'll know that he's not the easiest person to get along with, and for me as a person. I also didn't play my role correct in that situation because I felt like at the time. I started to realize what was needed to get forward in that streetwear scene. And I wasn't willing to do it. What was needed was for you to be a little bit subservient to kind of, what, what was that phrase Ace used to say? Oh, to pay your dues, right? That was what's needed to kind of get forward. And, 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 if, and, and if anything, it's, it's been proven right because everyone that kind of paid their dues, who licked the asses of the right people, who kind of just kept, you know, kept themselves around, They've mostly have been give, given a decent position. But I didn't want to do that because I just don't have it in me. Not because I think I'm better or anything. I just don't have it in me. I can't I can't be that person, which is why I enjoy doing this so much, right? Because I get to kind of do my own thing, which is why obviously I enjoy the DJ thing also because it's, I get to do my own thing. Like, I just can't be that guy. So that obviously didn't work. And then that relationship fell off. You know, it, it, it just it just went left. It went very left. No need to go, road, go down old you know, go down a memory lane on that one. Um, but I've known, I've kind of seen the guy around for a while, so he's legit as they come, so especially if you take my opinion when it comes to streetwear seriously and you think I speak some sense in that field, which I don't think so, but if you do think so, then I could definitely tell you that Supreme is definitely in good hands if he's going to be the creative director. And I also think for kids coming up, people like myself, it should also be really inspiring that somebody that I kind of saw coming up you know, at the same sort of time, kind of, has now progressed into this kind of level of position. It shows what's possible. If you put your best foot forward and if you do what Virgil and Kanye have kind of done in the past, 
where they've learned out loud, they've learned in public and they've failed in public. I think that's a really important part, being able to kind of show your work. I think it's all well and good having PSD files and line sheets like I do of, of stuff in your flipping hard drive. But unless people see it, touch it, feel it, they're not going to be able to know what you're about, what your taste level's like, what you're into, what your interests are, your skill level. It's not going to be on display. And I think there's a lot of people like that, similar to me, who kind of have that kind of, there's nothing outwards to show your creativity. And I think you need to do that quickly, you know, fast, if you, if you, if you really want to get forward in life, because as it's been proven, you know, he starts his brand, he does this Denim Tears brand, which, you know, there's some stuff in it I like, some stuff I'm not really a fan of. But through just being able to display his ideas with that brand, I'm sure was able to kind of get him in certain rooms with certain people because it kind of showed you that that was basically a living breathing flipping cv or portfolio of like here is what i can do with limited resources here's what i can do with this size of a team here's what i can do with this years of experience give me a bigger playground give me more tools to use and i'm gonna fit this out of the park do you know what i mean that's what it kind of proves in that regard so it's really cool to see super inspiring i um, can't wait to see what he does first in terms of the first sort of like change we see with supreme coming forward i'm sure we're gonna probably see them i guess i'd assume we'll probably see that in what full winter 2024 or something I'd, I'd imagine maybe his fierce his first sort of outing maybe i'm not too sure but we're definitely gonna be able to see that coming up very very soon so keep an eye on that if you're that way inclined keep an eye on that if you're that way inclined um next on the list as well we should of course mention the supreme 2022 spring summer preview um i'm generally never a fan of supreme spring summer i think the full winter is always the collection to go to especially for a guy i think men's fashion exists mainly in the winter anyway i think most dudes struggle to dress well in the summer because you have to wear shorts <laughs> right and most dudes don't know how to wear shorts myself included and short sleeve stuff it's just weird um, but when it comes to jackets coats jumpers long sleeves combat pants cords jeans suits yo we're we, we're, we're always set up um, for winter but this happens to be, weirdly enough, one of the better spring summer collections I've seen for Supreme in a while, legitimately. And usually, like I said, I'm not really a fan of spring summer Supreme at all. And I thought this collection was really, really well done. Um, first of all, the best thing I thought again was this Nate Lauman uh, vest thing that they've got here, collaboration. I thought that's pretty cool. I like this uh, varsity jacket they've got there called the Iron Flux varsity jacket. That was something that I was really a big fan of once I saw in the preview. This pullover looks absolutely mean. Let's just actually let's, let's click a picture of this. Here. Let's click pictures. Oh, my nose is going absolute gang green style, but let's click the picture. Hopefully, loads. There you go. So, this is this uh, Gore Tex, what's it called? Gore Tex Pass Light jacket is absolutely fire like definitely something that i would be um into wearing um i'm not really sure about my guest remember i think I remember saying on the podcast a while back that it feels like to me supreme have really started to up the amount of jackets that they make in in brand in in line in house and it felt like to me there would come a point in time in the future where they might just completely stop doing collaborations with like Stone Island, North Face, and just start producing their own in-brand, in-house uh, down jackets and whatnot. Because they've effectively been upping their out outerwear offering, like season in, season out, like without stopping since they've, you know, since the flipping uh, North Face has became a big deal. But it hasn't really happened. If anything, they've just added more North Faces on top of what already they're already making. Or the other way around. Do you know what I mean? It's not really that point hasn't really come yet. So maybe I was a bit off on that regard. But this jacket is great. Um, the leopard or the pink sort of colorway are probably my favorites. No point in getting the black, but I think those two colorways are definitely ones that I'd go to straight away. What else do I like to this collection? Um, I thought the Italia, you know, the kind of vintage Italy Italy sort of jacket thing was really nice. I'm just glad it's not a flipping collaboration with Palace or anything. That's thank God. Because they seem to have an infatuation with like nineties, you know, Serie A football stuff. So great to see that's just a supreme thing. Cool. This Tartan suit is absolutely banging too. 
definitely something that I would be into wearing. Um, definitely something I've been into wearing. And again, something that I feel like they've done really well over the years. Their suitings, um, they seem to sell out quite often. Whenever they're available, I remember one they made one that was like in black, a minty green and a blue, and that sold out really quickly. So it's either supreme kids don't mind buying the suits or they're generally something that people generally in like to wear day to day um i'd imagine the fit is quite relaxed as well so if you're a kid that just wants to have a suit in your wardrobe that you can kind of pull out whenever the time need be because again the time will come where you need to wear a suit so why not be able to wear a suit from a brand that you actually trust um you know with a fit that you enjoy that kind of looks well it looks good regardless of what kind of season we're in regardless of trends it kind of cut the right way and i guess all you have to do is basically get the hems taken up a bit if you want to wear it that way but yeah the tartan suit looks absolutely bang definitely reminds me of um what's his face the old manager from flipping sex pistols oh uh, what's his name it reminds me of something that he would wear with, with a couple of brothel creepers and whatnot um uh, what else i liked here this vanson jacket was really nice um uh, there's a kind of reversible jacket that looks very similar to the balenciaga jacket that they did a couple seasons back that i really like the look of actually i think it's this one um it's the gore-tex reversible polar tech line jacket the actual reverse looks really interesting. This kind of two block sort of color thing. This again, it reminds me a little bit more of the Supreme I grew up on. Uh, maybe the logo is a little bit too big, but in terms of the kind of overall offerings that they had, it wasn't super logo heavy. There wasn't, you know, crazy branding all over the place. Just kind of subtly done. Maybe back in the day, this would have been a little bit smaller and maybe more tonal. But overall, I think this jacket is really nice, especially the reverse um, where the fleeces is probably one of my favorite bits with a two color block. You know, they got the olive there as well. The black is what color we're here. Oh, it's like a white and sky blue. That's really, really well done. And then of course, they've got one with the white uh, with Gore-Tex written all over it. Uh, let's reverse that again. One more. So you can see the other side of things. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, what else do I like to the collaboration? No, what else I like to the new collection? Sorry. Uh, buh, 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 buh. The Silver Surface shirt is absolutely smoking. I definitely see a lot of those kind of wavy garments crew type people are definitely going to be into this and definitely something I would wear myself to be honest it's definitely a great going out or DJ t-shirt as I like to call them <laughs> so definitely something that I'll be into wearing um, I definitely like this jacket too um, it's a utility jacket but I kind of it looks a bit similar it's like a fisherman's jacket to me <coughs> especially in the yellow I think Stussy did something similar as well this season um, this kind of jacket shape which looks really well done so yeah this is really uh an easy easy cop in terms of stuff they've got available this look a bit of a washed fabric there with a the contrast um on the collar not really a fan of the embroidery on the back but this is tonal so again you have to kind of live with that one let's go back uh what else did i enjoy this jumper is really nice what's that one called it's called the hand crochet jumper that looks really cool Again, some more Nate Lauman pieces. They look really interesting. Some great cardigans, but I'm not really into that kind of Tyler the Creator look, to be honest. Um, it continues. Oh, what did was other thing I would just point out here? Uh, they got some great long sleeves here, some great jerseys. But one of my standout pieces, if I can find it, was the gloves. Because I remember copying these gloves back in the day, right? So they're, they're, they're bringing back these Franklin gloves. And if you remember back in the day, they used to have these Franklin batting gloves that I used to wear. Oh, no, I actually bought a pair of the original ones, which I lost. Then I bought a pair of just regular Franklin batting gloves from eBay. I bought like four pairs. And I think I've lost every single one apart from one. Shambolic. But what I would do is I'd wear these as my cycling gloves because the grip was crazy because these are essentially batting gloves that you use for baseball right so if you're going to be um you know using a baseball whatever playing baseball you use these to kind of grip the handle and they make for really great cycling gloves so if you're looking for cycling gloves and you don't want to wear the, the stuff that everyone wears at the moment which is the fox sports whether the fox symbol bicycle gloves or the mechanic gloves or you just want to wear gloves in general i really recommend franklin batting gloves they're really really well done um they're really uh what's that thing called they don't make your hands sweat too tough. 
Uh, they fit amazing. I think the fit goes like small, medium, extra large. Yeah, small, medium, large, extra large. Obviously, my man is extra large. Don't know the gang. Um, but yeah, big fan of these gloves. So I'm definitely going to be trying to cop as many of these as possible. Possibly black and red. I can't be wearing white gloves. That's just not the vibe. But yeah, the Franklin Bank gloves I'm very excited about. Um, they've even, they're even selling a flipping Airstream. That's flipping crazy. An Airstream, right? Traveler, like all decked out. With supreme on the inside there got like look at that looks how good does that look it's like a little diner on the inside isn't it? with the massive supreme uh uh couch there on the other side supreme branding on the shelf the rug's really cool too and then the other thing that was really cool that i thought i saw in a collection was the backpacks this might be one of the strongest seasons for backpacks and side bags i've seen in a while this backpack's shape and this colorway is absolutely smoking backpack uh resistant cordura and it comes in a sort of like granite gray with blue accents like crazy good this and a brown one are probably my favorite i think there's a brown yeah there's a brown colorway that kind of brown colorway it reminds me of the old bags i used to buy back in the day on flipping yahoo uh jp auctions for supreme back in the day like oh yeah 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 this is really really good like i would get every color but probably these two are my favorite colors the kind of the brown and this sort of like gray silvery color are really cool and it also looks equally as good uh once you get into the duffel bags which i'm definitely going to end up buying as a gym bag um, these look really great in all the colors as well um and then there's a really good side bag too that i thought looked awesome because it could fit your little water drink bottle on the side so i got a messenger bag there is that a messenger bag yeah, small messenger bag there that looks pretty decent. Might be a good little DJ bag, that one. They've got a sling bag also that they're offering. And then they've got, yeah, a nice little uh, hardest waist bag that looks pretty decent with a back strap on it, it looks like, yeah. Um, but the best one is this. This little small side bag looks really fucking cool, man. You can stick a little water bottle at the end there. And then you've got the main compartment there to put your main belongings and whatnot. So this might make for, again, a decent little DJ bag. If you're that way inclined so yeah pretty decent stuff from supreme most of the stuff's going to come out tomorrow um i think uh, it's quite it's quite a big drop actually for this one from what i've seen from supreme drops online so definitely check that out if you haven't already yeah more to come from them more to come from them anyway that's been the exodus English episode number 556 i'm struggling to breathe so i'm going to end this episode right here hopefully it hasn't been too painful for your ears patreon gang hold up another episode is going to come at you very very soon please forgive me for my tardiness but apart from that if this is it and if you're listening to the audio show you'll hear a song if you're watching via youtube we're just going to end so it's going to go straight to black but thanks again for tuning in i really appreciate all of you be safe take care see you soon see you